My name is Zach Taylor. I'm a retired Border Patrol officer. My main job was understanding and having intelligence capabilities about drug smuggling across the U.S. border. From the day I joined Task Force 160 at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, until today, I've seen nothing but government corruption. It is almost as if the virus was planted in those three cities to infect that population. It we is can almost be ready. as if the virus was planted in those three cities to infect that population. Not only did I, of course, research the Illuminati and come up with the answer there, but these people kept calling me from around the country. They've been calling me now for 22 years. What disease they have been diagnosed with. We know it's communicable. We assume it's serious. I've been asked on a number of occasions, uh, how many are there in the United States that uh, just say walk in the streets? And I say that there's close to 4 million, if not 4 million, practicing Satanists in America today. If the CIA has actually been involved in, involved in uh, smuggling drugs into the United States, as I know for the last 45 years they've been doing Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Now, part of the reason for this is that we have invested a huge amount in nuclear deterrence. But we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready for the next epidemic. The failure to prepare could allow the next epidemic to be dramatically more devastating than Ebola. The best lessons, I think, on how to get prepared are, again, what we do for war. We need a medical reserve corps. Lots of people who've got the training and background who are ready to go with the expertise. And then we need to pair those medical people with the military taking advantage of the military's ability to move fast do logistics and secure areas. We need to do simulations, germ games, not war games, so that we see where the holes are. Finally, we need lots of advanced R&D in areas of vaccines and diagnostics. There are some big breakthroughs, like the Dino-associated virus, that could work very, very quickly. Now, I don't have an exact budget for what this would cost, but I'm quite sure it's very modest compared to the potential harm. The World Bank estimates that if we have a worldwide flu epidemic, global wealth will go down by over $3 trillion, and we'd have millions and millions of deaths. If we start now, we can be ready for the next We don't have a picture of our Earth, except for the nice composite fake images NASA gives you to make sure you keep believing you're in a ball and keep arguing on their behalf, keep fighting for them. Keep telling people we went to the moon simply because you can't let your mind think of the possibility that someone lied to you. The government lied to you. I guess this is a photo of the Hubble telescope taking a picture of itself. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yet they believe there's an ice wall around Antarctica that you cross over. Where's this photo of the ice wall? Yep. Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the polls. So it's not actually a sphere. Eddie, why would anybody be paying money for people to lie about the world's best? <laughs> people getting knocked down. My name's Eddie. One by one, flat. they're getting knocked Hi, down. Eddie. Now, why would they lie? Oh, I don't know. How about $18 billion annually? If NASA gets to steal $18 billion from their taxpayers, well, even if you don't believe anything else I've told you, the bottom line could be they stole your money for a fake trip to the moon. They stole your money for a fake rover on Mars. They stole your money to show you CGI and cartoon pictures of the globe. $18.4 billion annually. That might be another reason to lie. Flat Earth. The well, because the surface of the Earth is curved, the well is pointing in a little bit di different direction. So the sun's rays come at a slightly different angle. So at this, on this day, 
I will measure that the sun is directly overhead for me, but I'll get my friend 100 miles away to measure the angle of the sun relative to the well. And if you, that tells you that the Earth is curved. With the Earth supposedly 23.4 degrees on its axis. And that leaves you, of course, the occultic number, again, 66.6 .6 degrees off. Uh, if you look at, like, the fuel that was loaded up into the Saturn V rocket, you can calculate where that fuel could take that rocket. It's to the moon and back. <laughs> so it's they're not going to the Piggly Wiggly, right, yeah. in the Saturn V. Do you guys 500. all agree that Nikola Tesla was a, a great scientist? Oh, he was a genius. For sure, right? He was a genius, but you right. got to remember that fan. Nikola Tesla lived in a, a world where he was so far ahead of the curve, and there's very few people that were able to compete with him or even right. understand what he was Did doing. You, this is just a fact. You can take it or leave it. Put in Albert Einstein hoax fraud. Endless videos. It's oh, Albert was a freak. Yeah. Endless, fr it endless videos. And <clears throat> like, wait a minute. Isn't Albert, wasn't Albert Einstein, Time Magazine's man of the century? Well, okay. Tesla Edison was a and Einstein guy. were alive and kicking at the same time. Tesla... There's quotes. The quotes could be bullshit. Well, you know, but Tesla there's quotes of the Tesla several decades crushing before Einstein, Einstein though. clowning him in Wasn't public. He? he thought Einstein I, was a fraud. Tesla was a big fan of experiments. Einstein was a big fan of equations. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments. And they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Uh, everybody knew the world was flat until one day some guy came along and said, "Oh no, no, it's it's a ball. We're we're spinning through space. We're circling the sun. A lie is a lie." It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be to be to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. Astronauts looking at the Earth. Uh, see a curved Earth, but what they don't realize is, is that it's not the Earth that's curved, it's the light taking a curved path from the Earth because of the strong gravitational field of the Earth that makes the Earth look curved. This is basically the biggest thing you could possibly lie about. The best way to brainwash the whole world is to lie to the whole world about what the world is. Now if we live in an enclosed system that means man can't leave and go to any other worlds. That means we are special. It is just us. We aren't a speck of nothingness in an infinite space vacuum. We are very special if this is the case. If this is the only world covered by a dome. As a form of mockery, they have the Flat Earth model on their website. Um, a set of encyclopedias I have. Um, they're Encyclopedia Americana. Um, this is volume two. It's the A's. What we're going to do is look at what it says about Antarctica. This is a 1958 edition. Okay, this was before the Antarctic Treaty was signed. They did flights, and it says these flights prove the inland areas to be featureless in character with a dome 13,000 feet high at about latitude 80 degrees south, longitude 90 degrees east. Okay, I have no idea what that means. There seems to be only one definition for the word dome. Um, anyway, if uh, anybody has any idea what this means, can explain this to me, I would appreciate it. Oh, couldn't have anticipated as to how much control we're putting into the hands of um, government, uh, large corporations, and people that perhaps we can't trust. Trading crisis, these people behind it sounds like a conspiracy. The, the power company actually gives you a thermostat for free, installs it in your home for free, charges you nothing for it, but there's a catch. And the catch is to get this high-tech, fancy thermostat, you have to allow them, in the event of uh, you know, excessive power consumption, to reach into you. So one of the basic things about using a computer on the internet 
is that your communications pass through the networks of various internet service providers, starting with the internet service provider that you are a customer of, and going through possibly several others, and then ending up at your destination. And each of those entities, technically, has the ability to look at all your communications and to record all your communications. How'd you sleep? Good. How about you? Yeah. Coffee's on. Thanks. One of the most alarming trends has been the increased centralization. You are buying all sorts of stuff. That means the consumer credit folks will have you. I guarantee you that many of these other database holders have files on you. Many, many more entities have wanted to know, well, what kind of a person are you? Every day, in so many ways, we are being watched. We're told that it's for our own good, for our own protection, to make our lives better. But is it? I'm Grant Jeffrey, prophecy expert and author of over 26 books. I spent two decades researching and detailing how our fundamental freedoms are being systematically eroded, how our governments are not controlled the way we think they are, and how all of this ties into remarkable prophecies from over 2,000 years ago. Until recently, all of this would have been considered science fiction or the ramblings of conspiracy theorists. But each of the technologies you have just observed either already exists or is being planned on a drawing board somewhere. The evidence is all around us. There is no denying that we live in a surveillance society. And really, no matter what we do, there is no turning back. Is really unprecedented. And it's not just in the United States that they're doing this. We actually found some documentation that this is part of a global effort um, that is uh, being promoted by the UN, by their statistics department. Uh, right now, we're, we're the most surveilled society in, you know, in, in history, obviously. Uh, this, this has gone into high gear. In November of 2008, there was um, a, an effort by Google to, to show that they were able to pinpoint a disease outbreak, a flu outbreak, before the Centers for Disease Control could do that, based on their sophisticated algorithm that they could tell that the person doing those searches had the flu. They were searching for chest congestion or thermometer or certain types of medication, cold or flu medication. And whenever one of those keywords would be entered into Google, they would, uh, it, it, would, it would set off a red flag. They would pinpoint that person's location based on their internet service provider, and then they would put a red dot on a map. But when you log on to Google to look something up, you don't do so with the expectation that Google is going to be capturing your information, studying you, and handing that information over to the federal government. So I think a lot of people found it very, very invasive. And what it raises is the potential for Google or really any other Internet uh, service that you use to turn over other sorts of information. You know, who, who, who's concerned about abortion rights, or who's a Democrat, or who's a Republican, or who is, um, you know, who, who has an interest in the Second Amendment? The reasons for surveillance and the need for better surveillance systems are compelling. If you want to keep track of your pets or children, or livestock or possessions, you can now put ID tracking devices on them. If you want to make sure employees are working the way they should, you can now monitor them. If you want to protect citizens from thieves, con artists, drug dealers, hate mongers, pedophiles, terrorists, and basically anyone and everyone who's a threat to society, you can now track, monitor, and scrutinize them. If you can save lives and protect property, why wouldn't you? And if you yourself are engaged in unsocial or illegal actions, your rights to privacy should be taken away. Those are compelling arguments. You take the cash away and you create credit cards and then you create microchips. What you're doing is suddenly, you know, we become the whim of the powerful people. They can punish us by pressing delete three times on the computer screen. Suddenly $10,000 turns into $10. One of the most important developments in the, this privacy area that's come with the digital revolution is that Orwell's picture of loss of privacy, the government watching us, the surveillance cameras everywhere certainly is true to some degree. There are surveillance cameras everywhere. That's hilarious. Where do you get all this stuff? I don't know how I lived before YouTube. What, you just search all day? No. Painful or stupid is easy to find. Useful and factual take a while.
employers, law enforcement agencies, stores, insurance and credit companies, hospitals and the government would all argue that their surveillance is necessary. They'd also all state that individual surveillance and data systems are not invasive and pose no threat of creating personal profiles or a data shadow. Simply stated, one source of surveillance at one location on one part of a person's life is not a real concern. But if all this disparate information is gathered and sorted and filed in a central location, it would create a complete and detailed profile much more invasive than anything even a police check could get. The infringement on individuals' personal freedoms and the possibilities for abuse would rival George Orwell's big brother government. The World Wildlife Fund, their main objective is again to reduce the world's population. Prince Philip, uh, Queen Elizabeth II's husband, he said that. He said, if I ever came back, you know, reincarnated, I come back as a deadly virus. Well, of course he would. Because that's what these people are into, into destroying the world society. Now that's how one can begin to understand the real goals of the be Agenda ready. 21 Sustainable Development UN Global Plan. You see, that plan in, in its own expression calls for a reduction of the human population by 85%. So you begin to wonder how it is we can survive in this country when our resources are taken and put off limits for our use, whether it's you know, my, mining resources, or timber resources, um, food resources, etc. You know, if we were to remove half of this country's land mass from productive human use, it's only a matter of time before human population can begins be to fall. But when we understand that that's the plan of the United Nations, we can begin to put this in a perspective that we need to be putting it in. He thinks that he's uh, doing the right thing for the most number of people by advocating that we kill off some of them because there's just too darn many of them. I believe the whole concept of, of population control and diminishing the world's population to a place where uh, we can sustain development uh, and bringing it below one billion is, is setting the stage for mass persecution down the road. What if people actually buy into that idea that much of the world has to be eliminated in order be for those who are left to be able to continue to function? You're, you're going to see more wars, more famines, more disease. We ready. Some of this intentionally spread to reduce the population of mankind. There's a place I visited uh, called the Georgia Guidestones, we can be where ready. they present the Ten Commandments of the New Age movement in a number of different languages. And one of the commandments calls for the reduction of the population of mankind down to a fraction of what it is right now. So a thinking, intelligent person should be asking, be how are they going to achieve that? If that is one of their goals, and they're going to work toward that goal, then who are the victims going to be, and, and how are they going to choose who lives and dies? The Bible says that in the we last days, ready. the government of the Antichrist rests on three pillars. The first is a global government, the second is a global, uh, global economy, but the third is a global religion. The people at the forefront of this one world movement, generally speaking, are extremely anti-Jewish and anti-Christian. And they want to bring together all the religions of the world and unify them for, for a specific purpose, which is to put a leadership figure in power that would rule the world. And the Bible warns us of these kinds of developments in the, in the last days. You know, that in the last days, people will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Then they'll be turned unto fables because they want to hear what they want to hear, not what is necessarily true. You know, and, and, and we're, we're living in a generation now where truth is, uh, it, it, it has become, like, it's subjective. I mean, there, there can be two versions of the truth. You voted for parties. <laughs> what more could you do? But what you don't know is they're one and the same, and you'll follow the leader who was put there by you. But you simply don't see it's all part of the game. Another distraction, like money and fame. Oh, yes. But as long as we own all the media, too, what's really happening does not concern you. So just <laughs> secret societies, but ain't no secret if everybody talks about it. As a television producer who was Dave Chappelle standing, which means I did his rehearsals season one and two of Chappelle show, I saw what happened to Dave. Dave used to give me advice all the time. And one of the key things he told me was, no matter how much money they offer you, and he said they, as he pointed in my chest, he said never forget who you are or where you come from. And he walked away from me. And I didn't get it at the time until the nigga left. And I said, oh, 
And him and Charlie Murphy would tell me the same things all the time. And then I got it. This is a war. And there is these cats are sorcerers. And we need to take, and I know the words magic and sorcery takes people to make you think that I'm talking about the Eastwick Chronicles or, or Harry Potter, but this is real because it's affecting our babies. So when they see all these signs visually that say whatever has happened in urban America as far as the perception on television and film, I was basically the fly on the wall. That's why this brother is so correct. There you go, we're so correct when he says we are at war. And I know it's somewhat difficult to believe that a war can be anything other than physical, but it is. Disney World looks like a whole fun bunch of rides, but what we actually have here are a number of rides that are sponsored by military industrial corporations. Happiest place on earth, my snow white ass. Walt Disney was hired by J. Edgar Hoover to, to instill mind pattern programming into the children. It was an FBI plan. It was, it was instigated. To really um, appreciate how this could be done, need to appreciate something called trauma-based mind control. Trim News Now on Fox News Channel, the Los Angeles Times and the Associated Press are now reporting Michael Jackson has died in Los Angeles this afternoon. And of course we know that the Jacksons were also ritually abused. Really it's a tragedy at the end of the day. That is the type of creature that his father produced. You just said that you would practice the dance steps and your father would be holding a belt in his hand. Is that yeah. what you just said? Yes. And he would tear you up if you missed. I know what evil looks like, folks, and I'm telling you, that's an evil man. And the whole thing is an evil spectacle. So I finally got my own TV show coming out next fall on CBS. It's a half-hour weekly show that I will host entitled Let's Hunt and Kill Billy Ray Cyrus. It's a fairly self-explanatory plot. Uh, each week we let the hounds of hell loose and we chase that jarhead, no-talent, cracker asshole all over the globe. Until I finally catch that fruity little ponytail of his in the back, pull him to his knees, put a shotgun in his mouth like a big black cock of death. That's how we sell sex to little girls! <laughs> They've basically sold themselves to the industry. So they're completely controlled with everything they do. They're told what type of music to make. You know, they're given specific producers to work with. Mm. They're not thinking for themselves in any way whatsoever anymore. And that's what was so good about the industry um, 15 years ago and wasn't as much control going on. They could literally take their track to a label, get it signed, and it would be out. Now it's a case of the label saying, right, this is what you're going to make, this is how it's going to sound, and this is who you're going to work with. From the bottom to the top, from the start to the finish, everything they're doing and releasing now is controlled. Escute bem, com o nível de bruxaria, satanismo, pornografia e espiritismo nos vídeos da Disney. Eu somente lhe vou dizer alguns nesta noite porque o tempo não permite, porque eu quero que a sua casa seja livre como a nossa casa foi livre. Por exemplo, no vídeo de Marmay, como se chama Marmay, The Little Marmay, aqui no Brasil? Lena Sereia, veja aqui, meu querido. Quero que você veja a capa da sereia. Se você parou para pensar e para examinar na capa a coluna terceira da mão direita para a esquerda é o membro genital, o membro sexual do homem parado para cima. Este vídeo de Little Marmay é um vídeo de pornografia infantil. Detrás da música, onde diz, kiss the girl, kiss the girl, beije a moça, beije a moça, há um grupo jamaicano falando palavras africanas para amaldiçoar a cada criança que está escutando o vídeo. Por exemplo, no vídeo de Aladdin, como se diz Aladdin? Aladino. 
Se você para o vídeo em slow motion, devagar, não sei o que chama, slow motion, você coloca devagar, você verá que ele diz tão rápido, mas você não pode entender. Ele diz, good teenagers take off your clothes. Ele está dizendo, crianças boas e adolescentes, tire a sua roupa. Tem um vídeo que tem causado sensação tremenda, se chama Pocahontas. Você sabe o que quer dizer a palavra Pocahontas? Você já estudou essa palavra indígena, o que quer dizer Pocahontas? É uma palavra indígena com dois sentidos. Poca, espírito. Hontas, abismo. Espírito invocado do abismo. Quando você diz Pocahontas... Você está chamando o diabo ao lado do seu lado e ao lado dos seus filhos. Isso que a Disney está ensinando, pornografia, espiritismo, satanismo e destruição aos nossos filhos. Há um vídeo chamado The Lion King, o rei leão, o leão rei. A revista Time disse que é o vídeo mais sujo mais perverso e carregado de violência que nenhum outro vídeo a Disney jamais produziu que as crianças que olham o Lion King hoje serão os assassinos amanhã você sabe quem produziu o vídeo de Lion King? foi um homem homossexual que já morreu de uh, AIDS? AIDS em Nova York se chamou John Smith ele que criou segundo um filme o leão que caminha feminado Onde é que você viu um leão afeminado? A música do Lion King é da nova era de Shirley MacLaine. Por isso as crianças ficam vidradas, porque a música é uma música do inferno. É uma música dedicada ao demônio. E se você para o vídeo de Lion King, o, o rei leão, o leão rei, em slow motion, quando ele pega com as patas no chão, e os, as partículas do pó que se levantam no meio da televisão forma a palavra sex. S e X, sexo. E você ainda crê que Disney é entretenimento familiar? Do you really believe that? Você crê que a Disney é para crianças? E vou apresentar isso, você nunca viu na sua vida. É a reportagem do Dr. James Dobson, num programa chamado Focus on the Family, é Enfoque a Família. Os livros dele estão traduzidos em português. Está Mickey Mouse apresentando o último vídeo da Disney. Sabe que você quer saber o nome? Growing Up Gay, Crescendo Homossexual. Agora a Disney criou dois Mickey Mouse homossexuais e duas Minnie Mouse lésbicas. Aqui neste vídeo de Growing Up Gay, o porta-voz da Disney convida a todos os adolescentes homens a explorar o maravilhoso mundo da homossexualidade. Isso é Disney. Michael Esner, o dono da Disney, de 60% das ações que ele tem, ele deixou a sua mulher em Burbank, perto da minha casa na Califórnia e se casou com um homem homossexual três meses atrás no Disney World Orlando, Florida eu vou lhe dar um conselho nessa noite em nome de Jesus você não sabe o que é Disney é um império satânico feito com uma assombrosa precisão para destruir a tua casa e para destruir os teus filhos e vou lhe dar um conselho nessa noite destrua esses vídeos e salve a sua casa da maldição do dia de amanhã